Hi there. So I interviewed my younger sister last night uh, about sort of sustainable fashion and her clothing buying and, and those habits that she has. Um, and it, it turned out to be, I think, a really, really good conversation overall. Um, I was particularly interested in uh, the conversation uh, that was developed around values focusing um, as uh, in terms of like getting the conversation started. So I opened up with, you know, questions about what are her values? What does she think is really important in life um, to, 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 to operate? What kinds of ways does she operate in the world? Um, which was informative uh, because she's my sister and I don't think we really had those kinds of conversations. Um, but I think that really helped sort of set the stage, um, you know, like feel a little bit more personal for her right off the bat. Um, I think it helped sort of get her engaged and in that sort of frame of mind to be making connections um, between sort of her purchasing power and uh, her values. And so what I, what I found and is that she is a very, very people focused kind of person. And so she, uh, what, we, what we ended up discussing was a lot of how, you know, buying clothing uh, and, and clothing production affects individuals and people across, across the globe, here locally. Um, and so I, I think it was uh, really, really beneficial to come at this particular issue of sustainable production and clothing buying uh, in that sort of framework of, of people uh, as opposed to, you know, the facts of how monumentally wasteful it is, for example, um, because that is not something that is innate to her. That's not how she particularly identifies. Um, that's not where she gives her attention um, I asked her a little bit about, you know, what, uh, where she was finding, uh, inspiration sort of in pop culture and of people that she knows, you know, and so, and a lot of those answers were not, you know, were not political leaders. They were not, um, uh, activists by any means. I mean, it was a lot of like country singers, you know, that, that she has found do things that she, that she in their free time that she really respects and, and appreciates so that I thought was was really interesting in that um, I needed to I needed to frame how I was directing my questions according to sort of that mindset um, you know uh, Dr. Hall talks about not using facts so I don't think we got into any facts um, throughout the entire process, um, which is which is difficult for me because I'm very, like, I like facts, right? I think probably a lot of us like facts. <laughs> I get a lot out of the, I guess, sort of feeling good about myself through the number of facts that I know, but it's not something that, that she particularly pays attention to, so... I think that that was really helpful for me to just like take a step back and appreciate that and say, okay, this is not how we're going to address this, right? This is, this is going to be something, uh, it, it takes a shift. Another part of this sort of interview process that I decided I was this sort of tack I was going to take, um, was that I really didn't want to, to have many, uh, statements from myself that ended in periods. So I really tried to just keep things a question, uh, thinking that I would rather she make the connections in her head. Um, and I would rather that she come out with the definitive statements, um, because I think that, that, I don't know, that seems like it would make a lot more of a 
difference overall, right? If uh, she was the one to finally make these connections. And I, I do think we got there some um, at the at the end, you know, I, we, I kind of took the temperature of, of how she was thinking about sustainable fashion on a whole, uh, which is a phrase that I didn't bring up um, until probably over an hour in um, pretty deliberately. I didn't want to. <laughs> um, I kind of thought that it might be helpful to sort of get there naturally as possible. Um, so anyway, um, the conclusion that I get from her is that she's, you know, not going to give up TJ Maxx entirely right now. <laughs> um, but that she is definitely thinking about it more, um, thinking about this sort of intention and places she gets clothes and why, why it's good to shop local, you know, which is something that I was affirming for her because she really likes being able to support the people around her in South Carolina, for example, um, which I think is a, seemed to me to be a really good sort of first avenue, right? That's like a, um, that's like your your gateway introduction into uh into sustainable fashion and, and being more choosy i guess uh about what we wear progress i would say um at the end of the day i'm still her brother and not someone who she takes a lot of influence from about many things in particular um but it seems to me like there are also other people in her life that she is hearing and paying attention to who are finding it to be a little bit important. Um, people close to her who are being more deliberate and saying things like sustainable fashion, you know, keeping that in, in her uh, mindset, keeping that in, in, in mind. Um, so uh, moving forward, I think that I will definitely continue to operate with this values focused language and understanding. I think that that seems remarkably useful, um, tapping into something that people can feel good about themselves about first, um, and understanding that that is a very important tool in creating change, because um, I think that it's going to come internally and if people can decide that it makes sense for themselves to do it because that's the way that they are and operate, I think that is going to make a, a world of difference more than me um, spewing some statistics at them. <laughs> <laughs>